Hello, if you don't know me, I'm Amanda Huell, I'm a textile artist from New Mills and this is the second week of a project that has nothing to do with textiles but we're looking at some artists that have been inspirational to me in my work and I hope you'll find some really inspirational stuff in the artists we're looking at that you can use in your work. So this is the second week and it's a project um, for the Project Earth Group from High Peak Community Arts in New Mills but anyone can join in. If you're part of Project Earth you'll have a kit with all the equipment you need in it and if you're joining in from somewhere else there'll be a list of materials that you need for this workshop. Last week we went to Russia on our trip around the world with artists and we looked at Sonia Delaunay and the work that she did which was just full of bright colour and geometric shapes and I've already seen the results of some of your work it's amazing I'm really impressed with what you've done so I hope you've enjoyed Sonia Delaunay and this week we're going to look at Paul Clay he's a German artist he was working at the same time as Sonia Delaunay through the 20th century um, his work was actually inspired a lot by the work of Sonia's husband, Robert Delaunay, who was also an artist. So Paul Clay was born in Switzerland and he died in Switzerland, um, but he had a German father, so he had German nationality. So he's a German artist, but lived a lot of his life in Switzerland. The Swiss didn't really like his art at the time and he was given Swiss nationality um, six days after he died so eventually they appreciated him. He said that every colour brings about a different response in us so you know we can see colours that make us feel warm, make us feel cold, make us feel happy, make us feel sad and his paintings he thought that colour was often all that was needed you could just get all the feelings you needed from colour he also had quite a sense of humour in a lot of his work and it had quite a lot of musicality about it before being a painter he was a musician and the paintings can be seen quite musical they make you feel like dancing or you can see harmonious colours and think of harmonious music. He had quite a childlike perspective on life some of his paintings have quite a childlike quality. He's most famous for taking a line for a walk which we'll look at in one of the activities in a minute. So the format is the same as last week if you did it. I'm going to disappear in a minute and show you two activities based on um, work of Paul Clay. Um, and I hope you enjoy them. And then there'll be a third activity at the end, which you can do on your own if you want to. Um, there is also a PDF um, instruction worksheet that goes with the workshop which you can download on the High Peak Community Arts um, website so if you want the worksheet afterwards you can do that. Okay I'm going to disappear now I'll see you later on I'm just going to show you some Paul Clay inspired work I hope you enjoy. Bye for now. So first we're going to have a look at the materials you need for this week. So if you've got one of the art bags, Project Earth, you're going to need your sketchbook. If not, you can work on paper. So you need either sketchbook or paper. Put those over there for now. You're also going to need, or probably best, if you've got a small piece of white card. You've got white card in your kits. You could work on just a piece of paper or a piece of card for this project, so you'll need that. You'll also need your pencil, eraser and pencil sharpener. You're gonna need your, I call these your barrel pen, they're made by barrel, but it's just like a, a handwriting pen. Any thin black pen will be fine, a biro or anything. You're gonna need some wax crayons, bright colors, not dark colors. I've got yellow, blue and purple. Red would be great, green, whatever colors you can find, wax crayons. Black paint and a paintbrush. 
pan some glue and you've got glue in your tubs in your kit with a cocktail stick to spread the glue so we don't use it too thick you might also want a tissue to clean up with in fact you will need a tissue for this project and if you're doing the extra project at the end the third project you might want to have some colored pencils or felt pens so i'll put those away and i'm going to get my sketchbook out which has got the picture that we're going to look at first of all which was a painting by paul clay just put it down here it's this one we're going to look at first this is called structural two and it was painted in 1924 which is the same year that Sonia Deloney painted her um, electric prisms that we looked at last year. You'll see in the other Paul Clay picture, which we're moving on to later, the colours and shapes are quite similar to Sonia Deloney, and Paul Clay was inspired by her husband. But first of all, we're looking at this painting. So Structural Two, painted in 1924. This was inspired by a trip that Paul Clay did to Tunisia. And the pictures in here are inspired by doorways, windows and buildings that he saw in Tunisia. And if you look closely, it's not very clear to see on here, but you can find the picture online or you can see it on your handout. You can see the shapes and um, pictures of, of fancy doorways and, and windows and there's some patterns there, some um, Moorish type art patterns that you would find in Tunisia. So we're going to recreate something like this, but we're going to do it with a crayon etching. So I'm going to put the book across here for a minute. And I'm going to work on one of these little pieces of card. You can work straight in your sketchbook if you want to, but you can do it on card and stick it in afterwards. So you need your wax crayons. And you're going to colour all over the card with your wax crayon. Change the colours a bit. And when I say all over, it's best if you actually leave a little bit of a gap around the edge um, so your fingers don't get too messy. I've got blue, I've got yellow, I've got purple, I think. So I'm just going to... Um, the important thing for this, doesn't matter what your pattern looks like, how your wax crayon goes on, you can do it neatly if you want to, or you can just scribble it all over like I'm doing. But the important thing is that every single bit of your card apart from the board around the edge is covered with wax crayon because if you've got little bits of card showing through like I've got there that's not going to work so well so just keep going you can go over the top of your colors doesn't matter how many layers of wax crayon you've got on there so long as every single piece of your card is covered apart from the border at the edge you see I'm holding it with that border it would be very difficult to do it without that so I think I've pretty much covered that quite well now with the wax crayon when you've done that you're going to need your tissue and just brush off any loose bits of wax that are on there just brush them off onto the side so it should be really smooth and shiny now you're going to completely cover all your wax crayon with paint so you're going to use black paint for this black paint straight from the top i've got quite a thick brush here but it doesn't matter how thick or thin your brush is you want to completely cover that wax crayon you're still going to leave a border around the edge but all your wax crayon is going to be covered up now you see you don't need very much paint you just need to spread it Remember, these paints have got to last for the whole seven weeks. So I've dipped my brush in twice, and that has given me plenty of paint to completely cover that wax crayon. As soon as you finish painting, you need to put the lid back on your paint pot and go and wash your paintbrush straight away. I'm just going to put mine down in some water over here. If you don't wash it straight away and the paint dries on it, it will ruin your brush. So you should end up with something like that. Now you might want to leave that to dry and move on to the next project and come back to this later because before you can do your etching, the paint needs to be completely dry. Luckily, I've done one earlier, so I've got one here so I can carry on the demonstration. You're going to need a cocktail stick. You should have these in your kit or something like this. You could 
Um, use anything that's sort of sharp at the end. You might have a toothpick or a little stick, but a cocktail stick. And we're going to start making our picture. So Paul Clay, I'm going to look at the bottom. I don't know if that's in shot, the bottom of his drawing here. He liked to build shapes up. So I'm going to start by doing a line all the way across my drawing there. And I'm going to do another one a bit nearer. It doesn't matter if they're straight or not. You can see how the cocktail stick is scratching off the paint and showing the wax in between. If you get too, uh, too many bits of paint, just brush it off, keep it clean. So I've drawn some lines and I'm going to start filling these lines in. So I could put some little houses at the bottom here, like this. I'm going to put a doorway in there. I could put another house next door, a doorway. might want to put... A line across the roofs, put another house in with a doorway. I could add windows or I could just add patterns to decorate. So I'm just going to do some patterns there across the top of the houses. I love doing this. I'm going to just wipe that, drop my tissue, keep wiping off the excess paint so you can see. I'm going to put some shapes in here in the roof to make them. You could rub off a whole section, you could rub off the whole section of that roof. So you could carry on with houses, I could just do some like arched window shapes all along here. You don't have to do houses and things like this, you could draw anything you like. I'm going to scrape some of those off, leave some of them on maybe put some little patterns in some of them. But anywhere you scratch with your cocktail stick, the paint will come off and you'll see the colours of the wax crayons underneath. You could draw a completely different picture. Anything you like, scratch it away with your cocktail stick. So I'm going to put that to the side and I've got one here that I finished earlier. There. So I've done some of these stacked lines. I've got little houses here. I've got some houses there. I've put circles in. I've got a flower, I've got a little underwater scene going on. Anything you like, it should be fun. Paul Clay's painting had a lot of humour in it and it was just fun. The colours should make you feel happy and the picture should just be fun drawing. So anything you like drawing and you should end up with something like that. So that's activity one. A wax crayon etching in the style of a Paul Clay painting. Now we're going to move on to taking a line for a walk. And you can tell from that painting we've just looked at, there were lots of lines in it, little line drawings all over it. And Paul Clay is most famous for saying that a line is a dot that went for a walk. So on this page in my sketchbook, I've done what we call continuous line drawing. I'm going to get another piece of paper here so I can actually do a sample while you're watching. But I started off, when I did this sample, I was sitting in my garden and there were some tubs of paint of um, plants on the table and I had a go at drawing the tubs of plants without taking my pencil off the paper. So I'm going to just put this here now. I'm, you can use a pencil or a pen. For this, I'm going to use the pen. If you use the pen, you can't worry about going wrong. If it goes wrong, it goes wrong. You just carry on. So I'm looking now... Um, just off the screen here and I can see my tubs of paint that I've got. So I'm going to have a go at drawing my tubs of paint here but without taking my pen off the paper. So when I get to that bit and I want to come to the next tub of paint which is sitting underneath it, I'm keeping my pen on the paper. Now the paint pots are all the same size, my drawing isn't but that doesn't matter. I'm going to put another one in now. So I've got three tubs of paint to the side of me here and they're stacking on top of each other. So there's my three tubs of paint. Now the bottom one's got quite a lot of paint in it so I'm going to go across like that. Still haven't taken my pen off the paper and I'm just going to tone that in a bit to show there's some paint there. Now I want to get up to the next one and put some paint in that. So I followed the line round. This one hasn't got very much paint and it's a bit lighter colour. Now I want to go up to the top one. This has got loads of paint, so I'm going to fill it in, and it's the darkest colour. So I'm going to make some zigzags that way and that way, just to colour in. So this one should be the darkest one. 
Now if I want to add some more I can follow those lines back down and then on the table next to it I've got a pair of scissors so I could start drawing the scissors. Here's my scissors. Still not taking my pen off the paper. Coming back up here, going to go around there and around there and I've got a little screw there and I could carry on, I could draw, I've got a wax crayon lying next to that so I could draw the wax crayon. So it's just a fun way of drawing. Not the best drawing but it's quite interesting, I really like drawings done this way. So the next thing we're going to do is to actually take the line for a proper walk and I want you to think about a walk, it might be a walk if you go straight out of your house. Here I've done what I would see if I walked up the road from my house, some trees, some houses, uh, there's a church, there's some more trees, there's a school with a playground and then um, some plants. Or this one is from where I lived as a child. I lived in near Dover. We've got the cliffs, we've got the sea, the boats and the fish, lighthouse. This is a made up walk. So I just want you to have a think about a walk you could go on. So if I go out of my house and down the hill, I get into the town and there's some shops there. I'm going to put some shops in. Put a shop, the shop with a big window there, and I'm just carrying on. Then I have some more shops. I'm just going to make this one a bit simpler. There we go. And then um, there's a bench, so I could put a bench in. There's a nice bench you could sit on. It's not a very good bench, but it's getting the idea of this taking a line for a walk. Let's get that bench in. Looks a bit more like a sofa. Um, what else have we got down the road? We could get to the town hall, so we've got a big building there, very big. We'll put a great big door in that. We'll put some windows in. Now I'm going to join them all up like that. If you want to cheat, you could just cheat. I'm going to put a clock there. There's the clock on the town hall. And we could go down into the tours and we would see the river. There's the river. You could put, whoops, if you take your pen off by accident, just put it back on. So here's the river flowing down. There might be some fish in the river. So I'm going to draw some kind of fish shapes here. This one's going to be going up that way. But just joining them all together. Not taking your pen off. So, have a go at taking a line for a walk. You can use your pen or you can use your pencil, have a go at both, draw something that's close to you to start with, get the idea. See I've written continuous line drawing there, continue, not very good at spelling, line drawing and I've not taken my pen off and then I'm going to go back and dot all the I's and cross the T's still without taking my pen off the paper. It's just a fun thing to do. So that's Paul Clay taking a line for a walk. If you're enjoying Paul Clay there's another activity that you can do and we're going to base that on this painting of his called Temple Gardens. I did a thing I mentioned earlier before being a painter he was a musician and he played the violin and you can sort of see the musicality of his paintings. If you can sort of feel where you are and you feel like you're walking through and there's a sort of rhythm to it. In this one, he's used a lot of orange colours. The colours are quite harmonious together. But then he's used a little bit of contrast here with the blues. Almost like a note jumping out at you. So this is called Temple Gardens. You can find it online if you want to have a look at it. Or you can see it on your um, handout. And I'm not going to tell you what to do. I'm going to ask you to use your coloured pencils and your felt pens and your wax crayons and just have a go at doing a picture. It could be something you can see from your window, it could be something you can see indoors, or you could just try copying this or think of a place you've been that you would like to recreate and have a go at making a harmonious coloured Paul Clay style drawing. I hope you have fun. That's it, I'll see you in a minute. Hello again, I hope you enjoyed working in the style of Paul Clay. I hope you found something in his artwork that was new and different to you and that you think you could use in future. 
whether it's taking the line for a walk, whether it's the wax crayon etching or using the colours in a harmonious way or just experimenting. So I hope you've had fun with Paul Clay. Next week we're off to Mexico and we're going to have a week of Frida Kahlo. So I'll see you then. Bye.